Hallo, Didier Stevens hier, senior handler at the Internet Storm Center. This video is for the analysis of a uh, JPEG image with malware uh, for my diary entry James Webb JPEG with malware. On Wednesday's uh, Stormcast, Johannes talked about a malware that was inside a James Webb telescope image uh, from this blog post here. This is the blog post. They explain that they have found malware that uses JPEG image, uh, images to transfer uh, the content, hmm, to transfer the, the payload. Hmm. So the, the code will not execute when you open the JPEG, that's not it, but the JPEG is used to uh, transfer the payload um, in a hidden way. And if you go to the bottom, here you have IOCs, and this is the IOC for the JPEG that you can find on VirusTotal. So, I wanted to take a closer look at the, the JPEG itself. And I have it here, inside the password protected zip file. And I'm going to take a look at it with my tool JPEG dump. But before I do that, I'm going to show you how a normal JPEG looks like, like the one that I have here, James Webb, the JPEG. It's this well-known image of the James Webb telescope. So let me run my tool JPEG dump on it. And then you get a list of all of the segments found inside that file, inside the JPEG file. Um, JPEG is built up of segments which are records and uh, you have different types of records. A normal JPEG file should start with an SOI segment, start of image, and end with an EOI, an end of image. And in between you have different segments with data, uh, like up segments, discrete cosine table segments, start of frame segments, Diffie-Hellman table segments, that's all for the compression here, DQT and DHT, and then the image itself, SOS, start of scan, with here the compressed image. With my tool, you can select a, a segment to take a closer look inside, like for example, select two, and here you can see that it contains this data, up uh, zero. Let's take a look at number three and four two. Number three, which is rather large, so I'm going to do a more. And as you can see here, this is Photoshop metadata, uh, Space Telescope Institute, NASA, and so on. Segment four, this is the EXIF data. Uh, Adobe Photoshop. So that's how a normal JPEG looks like. Now let's take a look at the JPEG that uh, contains uh, malware. Okay, and here we have much more segments. If we take a look, we have a start of image. Okay, that's normal. And then going down here, segment 15 is an end of image. And then segment 16 is another start of image. And if we go down here, 30 is an end of image, 31 start of image, 45 end of image. So what we have here inside that file is three JPEG files concatenated together. Okay. So it's, it's not a, a picture with uh, three frames, no, it's um, three times an JPEG file that is put inside this file. Now of course what I wanted to know are these different images or are they the same, are they identical? And that is something I can figure out by using option uppercase E extra to calculate the hash of each data, uh, of each segment's data, like this. Okay, so now 
for each segment that has data and the start of image and end of image uh, segments have no data but for each segment that has data I have the SHA-256 okay so these are all here different and then for the next image again I have the SHA-256 of each uh, set of data of each segment and if a hash has been seen before then between parentheses you will have the number of the segment the, so the index of the segment where it corresponds with uh, which has the same hash so here this segment 17 has the same hash as segment 2 here and that is the same that's uh, similar for all the hashes that follow 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So these are all the segments here. So all of the segments here have data that is identical. At least the hashes is uh, identical. So the data should be the same too. So from that I can conclude that these two images are actually the same because the same hashes. <coughs> and the same goes for the third picture. Here you can see that it matches two previous hashes in segment 2 and also in segment 17, 3 and 18. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, which corresponds to this here. So again, these three images are identical because they are hashes of the data of the segments is the same okay <coughs> so that's one thing now we know we uh, have three uh, pictures that are identical so actually only one to look at now next thing here is this d parameter d stands for difference and it should always be zero because <coughs> this tells you how much unexpected bytes there are between two segments so there shouldn't be any bytes between segments it should all be proper uh, segments and nothing should be in between here but as you can see here between segment 15 the end of image of the first image and segment 16 the start of image of the second image there is a lot of data more than 2 million bytes okay so between those two pictures that have been concatenated together inside that file something else has been put which is not a picture otherwise uh, the tool would find uh, segments inside here but there are no segments inside so let's take a look so it's segment 16 if I select segment 16 sorry uh, not the SHA here select segment 16 okay nothing is selected because this is a uh, start of image uh, segment uh, and it has no data to select the data which is between segment 15 and 16 you just add a d to the index so select the difference that comes before segment 16 like this and then we get an hexadecimal ascii dump of the data that is found here and here you can see a lot of A's and end certificate. So let's also take a look at the beginning and I'm going to do that with my head tail utility. It's just a combination of the head and tail uh, utility. So you have the first 10 lines of the output and the last 10 lines of the uh, output and here you can see begin certificate and here end certificate. So it looks like a certificate has been put in between those two images. Let's dump it and not do a uh, binary, sorry, not do an hexadecimal ASCII dump, but now we suspect it is actually a, a printable uh, certificate. So let's do a dump. And indeed, this is a, a certificate. Now, it is not a proper certificate because a certificate should always start with the letter M. I also refer to that 
in um, my diary entry here you can see it starts with dvq well that's not normal because if you go to this blog post here i explain that a certificate always starts with byte value 30 and that results in the letter m okay so if you have a certificate like here and it doesn't start with uppercase m then something is wrong and that's the case here because it starts with tv and tv that's also well known because um that is the um mz header uh, for pe files so this is base 64 we can decode this with my tool base 64 dump like this and then each line is uh, separately decoded uh, at the end a lot of zeros here we can see strings that uh, correspond to executable code let's take a look at the beginning so here we have the mz running those text data yeah so this certainly looks like a pe file i'm going to use option w to in your all white space hmm? so makes a result of that is that all those base this uh B64 uh, strings so let me show you here this line this line this line all of that is concatenated together when you ignore the white space so like the carriage return new line here like this and then it just finds two strings begin certificate okay that's a false positive but here tvq mz and here you have the md5 hash so you can look that up on virus total for example this is the virus total here of the image and this is the virus total analysis of the um, malware and the pe file 64 bit uh, an assembly and what it does I, I, i'm not going to analyze the pe file itself here hmm? and also the pe file doesn't execute when the jpeg is open eh? uh, there's other malware that extracts the jpeg from the image eh? that is all explained in the the blog post that you can find here when you go to my diary entry or to the stormcast uh, page of that day okay so last thing I'm going to do i'm going to select that um, base 64 decoding number two do a binary dump and pipe this through my pe check tool to confirm that it is indeed a pe file and it is because it decodes properly and last thing an overview of the segments okay so what is the malware here how was it uh, created well just by taking one picture on james webb concatenating this together so for example do a copy of james webb and then the malware encoded as a certificate and is encoded as a certificate because then it can be uh, just decoded with certutil again james webb again james webb yeah uh, do this binary and then here malware jpeg like this so that's actually how the image that's one of the ways to create uh, that image